learners, welcome to today's lesson. I am Kezia Wanjiko. We continue with VAT. Today we are going to focus on uh, issues in VAT. In our previous lesson, we looked at uh, computation of VAT for a firm that is selling at a price that is inclusive of VAT. And we say that when the prices are inclusive of VAT, uh, you must know that the price that you're charging the customer constitutes two aspects. One, it constitutes the selling price of the business uh, or as determined by the business. And two, it constitutes the VAT of 16%. We said a business will be required to quote prices inclusive of VAT under two circumstances. When the business is selling, one, to unregistered persons, and two, when it is selling to the final consumer or when the business is a retailer, like a supermarket. For today, we're going to look at issues in VAT and our first issue is going to be refund of VAT. Refund of VAT. So the question here is when or under what circumstances? Under what circumstances does the commissioner refund VAT? So for the commissioner to refund VAT, the taxpayer or the taxable person, the registered person, must make uh, an application in writing and you must prove and provide documentation as to why you should be uh, refunded the VAT that you've already paid. Now remember that we had said earlier that a taxpayer will pay VAT because he's collecting, is appointed by KRA, by the commissioner, to collect VAT on behalf of KRA. So the taxpayer collects VAT on his uh, sales, what he called output VAT, and then deducts from the collected VAT, he deducts the VAT that is paid over to the suppliers. So he'll take output VAT, deduct input VAT, that excess is what is VAT payable. And it is payable to the commissioner simply because the, we say the incidence of VAT lies with the final consumer. No, there are the circumstances under which the commissioner will refund VAT is uh, the first one if the taxpayer is making zero rated supplies. In our earlier lessons, we said a zero rated supply is a transaction that will attract VAT at zero percent. So, in such cases, it means that if you go back to our account which you said this is output tax, this is input tax. So you will have had purchases here. You've made purchases. And let's say on your purchases, you paid 100,000 as VAT. And then you had other taxable inputs. For example, rent, commercial rent, electricity, telephone, uh, audit, you got management consultancy services, such. The total of that, let's say it was uh, 50,000. But on your sales, you sold, all your sales were zero rated, or a very big proportion of your sales were zero rated. So you collected nothing. So when you balance this, you will have, you'll have paid 150,000 you will have collected nothing. Let's say, for example, if you're exporting, and therefore you will have a VAT refund of 150,000. Because we are, again, we're saying VAT is not, the incidence of VAT is not on the business. It is always on the consumer. So since it, this is what you are, you've already paid, then you get it from KRE. So that is how a supplier of zero rated uh, supplies recovers his VAT from the commissioner. The other condition is in case of bad debts, what you're going to call bad debt relief. 
Now, in our earlier lessons, we said that a business, for tax purposes, a debt is going to be considered as bad at the earlier of two things. So one, expiry of three years since the date of supply, and two, if the debtor has been declared uh, bankrupt and you can actually show you have proof for it from a court of law. So in such cases, you're going to recover the bad debt that you, you paid on behalf of your debtor. And that arises because uh, if we flash back to the earlier lessons, we had said the tax point or the point at which tax becomes due and payable is the earliest of one, the date of the invoice, two, the date of delivery, three, the date when you receive cash, receipt of cash, whether in full or partial payment of a transaction, and four, in case of constructions, when you get a certificate from an, uh, an architect. So let's deal with this three, the earlier of invoice, delivery, and receipt of cash. Now, when you're selling on credit, invoice and delivery precedes the receipt of cash because you're going to receive cash much later. So it means, according to our tax point, if, for example, in January, we are selling goods worth a million, and the terms are that you're going to be paid in 60 days, that is the credit period. Then, holding everything constant, this we shall receive this. Let's assume this is beginning of Jan, and so we'll get this in uh, March. So the payment shall be received in March. So, if you are accounting for cash, this is when our bank gets debited. But, according to this tax point, uh, we are going to account for this transaction, this credit transaction, in January because in January, delivery preceded the receipt of cash. So as a result of that, it means that every business will always fund its debtors for VAT purposes. So should that business be declared bankrupt or three years have expired, that means there is no hope of ever getting that money back. Then this VAT that you had paid over to the commissioner, you request the commissioner to uh, refund you or to allow you to deduct bad debt relief from your output VAT. Uh, then the other one is inventory relief. Now, we said that at the time of registration, once you hit the threshold uh, turnover of 5 million and you request for registration but, and you apply for registration from the commissioner using the prescribed form, the commissioner will communicate to you after certifying that you are truly eligible for registration. He will communicate in writing and he will have a there will be a start date for levying or for charging VAT. We said once you receive that communication from the commissioner, you should immediately do a stock take. So when you're doing that stock take, you're determining your inventory at the point of registration. So we're saying all the goods that you have bought and are in stock at the time of registration, you are allowed to claim the VAT that you suffered or that you paid on such stocks before the uh, registration. So this inventory relief refers to the goods in stock at the time of registration and to any capital, uh, any construction or any capital assets that you may have bought 12 months prior to registration. Why? Because if, for example, we constructed a building and we paid VAT on inputs and you're using it in the production of our output, it is still relevant to us. So we need to claim the input VAT suffered. So capital goods uh, acquired 12 months prior to the registration is um, claimable under this inventory relief. Then you also get a refund from the commissioner when tax is paid or had been paid in error. For example, if there was an arithmetical mistake when you are computing the 
tax or if you use the wrong rate, meaning that you overpaid the tax, then you can request. So here you talk of requesting for relief of error or mistake. Why? Because uh, in VAT, it is the taxpayer who prepares the return or what we called VAT account. So if you did any mistake in that preparation, then you're requesting the, the commissioner to allow you to correct that mistake. That is why we're, we're talking of relief of error or mistake. The other one is uh, when VAT has been paid in respect of goods that have been exported. So VAT paid on goods that are subsequently exported. You remember that all exports are zero rated. So it means that you need to recover that VAT. So these are the circumstances under which the commissioner is going to refund um, VAT that are a taxpayer may have paid. The other issue that you're going to look at is a remission of VAT. Issue number two. In some cases, it's also called rebate of VAT or VAT rebate. Now, uh, remission of VAT happens when, for whatever reason, the, the commissioner feels that they can waive remission, they can waive the VAT either partially or in full or any other tax that they can waive it uh, or, and therefore reduce the amount payable by the taxpayer. So in this case of remission of VAT or rebate is the actual amount by which the commissioner has reduced the tax. So like if you're supposed to pay 100,000 and the commissioner feels, for example, that the goods with respect to which you're paying input VAT were obtained in the public interest. For example, you bought stuff that you later donated to a disaster fund. Uh, in case of a disaster, or to a refugee camp, in case of such uh, donations. So for that, he's going to remit, he's going to waive that. Of course, that is done in writing. And you must have uh, notified the commissioner before you bought the goods, so that he's aware and uh, he's able to remit that. So we're going to read from the Act, circumstances under which the commissioner remits or waives either in partial or in full the tax that is due from a taxpayer. Remission can be granted to and in respect of, we are reading from the Act, A, capital goods excluding motor vehicles of a total value of not less than 1 million shillings per investment imported or purchased locally for new investments or for the expansion of investments. This can be uh, connected to the fiscal policy objectives, where it was said that in fiscal policy, it is a role, one of the, one, one of the incentives or the roles that tax plays in the economy is ensuring that there is enough tax signals and shift signals in the economy to encourage investments, both local and uh, foreign investment. So in order to encourage businesses to expand, you the commissioner waives the VAT that is payable on the machinery and everything that they need to be able to expand. B, taxable goods for emergency relief purposes for use in specific areas and within a specified period, imported or purchased locally by the government or its approved agent, a non-governmental organization or a relief agency authorized by the minister responsible for disaster management. Where the goods are for use in areas where a natural disaster or calamity has occurred in Kenya, like excessive flooding or a fire or other disasters, uh, the goods are intended for use in officially recognized refugee camps in Kenya, like Dadab. Uh, three, 
The goods are household utensils, foodstuffs, materials for provision of shelter or equipment, and materials for health, sanitary, or education purposes. Four, in case of a natural disaster or calamity, the importation of or purchase locally is made within six months or such further period, not exceeding 12 months, as the commissioner may permit in each case. Part C, when the commissioner can waive the tax or remit it, goods including motor vehicles and aircraft and taxable services imported or purchased by any company which has been granted an oil exploration or oil prospecting license in accordance with a production sharing contract with the government of Kenya and in accordance with the provisions of the Petroleum Act. So that is the, the likes of Ngamia 1, Ngamia 2. D, capital equipment and machinery imported or purchased solely for use in the manufacture of goods in a licensed customs bonded factory for export only. Now, if you're manufacturing and, and a bond, it means you've already entered into an official contract with the customs department that everything you produce shall be for export. So the debt you breach that or you start selling locally, that bond is cancelled and therefore you start paying taxes like every other taxable person. Mm -hmm.